All right, for this next video, we are continuing the fact pattern we've had so far with John Taxpayer, and we are going to now input the gain or loss transactions on the sale of his stocks, okay? So, uh, topics we're covering in this video, um, you know, capital gains and losses on the sale of securities. So these are publicly, publicly traded stocks that you would have in your brokerage account, and uh, how we use that data to complete the form 8949, and the Schedule D, okay? Now, uh, the facts that we're working with here, the, the continuation again, um, this is a continuation of the previous videos. So we've got John Q. Taxpayer, he's a sales agent. We've already gone through the process of entering his W-2, his interest income, uh, he had some student loan interests. We've also completed Schedule C for his side business, his e-commerce store. And we've also entered information about the sale of personal use items, right? So we sold some personal use items at a yard sale, got some 1099Ks. Uh, then in the subsequent video, we looked at how to enter uh, gains or losses on the sale of cryptocurrency, right? So John had a Coinbase account, so we've already entered those pieces. And now we are moving on to his brokerage account. So he had a brokerage account with a U.S. broker. Bought and sold some stocks during the year, so we're going to enter those pieces. So, uh, if we look at the tax return again, we're using uh, TurboTax, the online version. This is the self-employed version, and so here's the my info screen to start with. And so, as we uh, start to enter the stock transactions, we're going to be doing so in the investment section. So, if we look at the federal page here, uh, and we go down to wages and income. And you can see at the top here items that we've already entered. And if we scroll down uh, to the investments and savings section, we can see here that it gives us an option to enter stocks, crypto, mutual funds, bonds, or other items reported on 1099B. And that is what John received here. So here is uh, a copy uh, of the page that John received. This is his form 1099B. Obviously, this is not a real one, right? This is just for uh, educational purposes, but it's a 2022 uh, 1099B reporting statement from the broker. And you could see here the sales transactions that he incurred during the period, right? So he had um, uh, a couple of sales of this public stock here, sale of another stock here, ETF. And then we can see the proceeds, the cost basis, and then the gain or loss on the transaction. Now, what we're going to do is enter all this information manually, but the nice thing is if you use TurboTax and you have a broker that they interface with, you can actually just download the data directly. So I'll show you how that works. Right? If we go into uh, this section here for the stocks, uh, we can see here what's already been entered. Right, So we've already entered some 1099Ks. We've entered uh, some information from Coinbase, those are the crypto transactions, some interest income. So at the bottom here, we're going to add additional investments. And so uh, here, here's the, the prompt, right? It says, we'll save time by importing and organizing your investments, right? So this is a great feature, right? So if you have <clears throat> a broker uh, that, that's one of these or perhaps one of the additional ones down here, you can actually log in through your uh, to your broker here via this portal and then it'll download that transaction data right very very helpful in our case because this is not a real taxpayer the this is not a real social security number not real transactions uh, we're gonna have to enter everything manually so I'm gonna ahead and go ahead and do that uh, for you here so uh, it's asking us what do we want to entice, enter as far as investment type. Well, we have stocks, right? So we have a 1099B uh, from the sale of stocks. So I'm going to go ahead and check that uh, section there. Go ahead and continue on through. And this is just asking us uh, from what source is this coming from? So this is optional information. Uh, in other words, it's not going to be displayed on the tax return, right? Only the uh, actual detail, the, the, the buy sells transactions are actually going to be detailed on the return not where it's actually coming from so in this case uh, you know if John had 
uh, brokerage account I mean let's just say you know brokerage like that's the name of the brokerage company you can enter that and that'll help keep it organized right so if you have multiple broker accounts you can enter the name of the broker enter all those transactions and then go back and start again and enter all the transactions from the other account so it helps kind of keep it uh, separate for you for a little bit then to ask us is do we have any employee stock options right so RSU's uh, very popular right nothing uh, and John doesn't have any of these right so if you look at our uh, brokerage statement these are just publicly traded stocks uh, of which John has no affiliation with he's just a mere investor there are circumstances where if you are part of an employee stock uh, plan you can have a you can have the sale of stocks in your brokerage account and that was part of your compensation and so that's why they're asking you this is because we might have to pull out uh, those types of stock options because they often need uh, additional adjustments so in our case we're going to say no uh, and it's asking us do we have more than three sales on your 1099b and we do right so we do have more than three sales do any of these sales include any other type of investments right so land collectibles no right we're just selling publicly traded securities the reason why they ask us this is because there are different rules for things like collectibles okay so in our case we just have publicly traded stock so we can go ahead and answer no did you buy every investment listed on your 1099b in our case yes right and again the reason why they ask us that is because if you inherit or you received the investment via gift your basis is not going to be uh, the same as if you just bought it, right? There, there are special rules about how you um, inherit or receive the basis of the person that, you know, gave you gave you the property, right? So there are different rules. There's nuances to the rules if you inherited or were gifted the investment. If you just put cash into your brokerage account and bought it, uh, then that's your cost basis, right? So it's asking us, did we buy every investment listed here? Yeah, we purchase everything ourselves. Okay, so we're going to enter each one by one. So there are um, uh, there are certain rules about aggregating the transactions, but because we only have four entries, we're just going to enter them one by one. Um, a little tedious, but again, what's nice is you uh, you know you have that option to automatically download and upload them. So. Uh, you know, I would recommend using that feature rather than go ahead and enter all these manually. But, you know, for purposes of the video, we're going to go through it just so we can see how it's done if you want to enter these things manually. And then, again, we'll look at the return at the end and see how all these items end up on the 8949. So the sale here, okay, so it's asking us short term or long term right that's very important but also whether it's covered or non-covered right so covered securities are are just that the, the basis in the stock that you uh, purchased it for is reported to the irs so the irs has that information uh versus uncovered the basis is not reported to the irs but the broker might still provide it to you so the broker often will track your basis but uh there are certain uh, rules where they don't actually report that information to the IRS. So in, in, in John's case here, if we look at his 1099B, we can see here that these are short-term transactions for which basis is not reported to the IRS. Okay, so it's non-covered securities. But you'll note here that we still have the cost basis information, right? So we, we still need both columns, right? We need the proceeds, we need the cost basis. But by saying this is non-covered, the cost basis information wasn't reported to the IRS on this 1099B. All right, so that, that's what they're getting after here. Okay, so if we go back to the return, uh, so the sales section, so the first entry we've got, uh, we've got um, short term, uh, so we've got a short term gain uh, or loss. Well, all these are short term rather, right? So if we look at the 1099B again, we have just the one page here. And these are all short term. So all these are short term where the, the date acquired and the date sold is within a year. Okay. So that's why it's a short term transaction. So it's short term transactions, non covered, and that's what all of these are going to be. So if we look at the return again here, the sales section, it's going to be short term basis not reported to the IRS. Okay. So non covered. 
Uh, sales info, what type of investment did you sell? Stock, non-employee. Remember, we're not an employee of the company in which we sold the publicly traded stock, right? So it's not uh, RSU or an ESOP or anything like that. So non-employee stock, the first transaction was 66.558 uh, shares, and it was in the name of the company is just Public Stock Inc., right? So again, not, not a real company. Uh, date acquired was November 12th, 2021, and the date sold was September 8th, 2022. All right. When we look at the proceeds, uh, proceeds were 1131.15, okay, and the cost basis was 1752.08, right? Now, it, it prompts us down here, you know, do we have any other adjustments that we might need to make? So, uh, in our case, we agree with the cost basis, so we're not going to check this. And we don't have any other items on here that need to be entered. In other words, we don't have any accrued market discount or wash sale issues. There's no federal withholding tax on any of these dispositions. Uh, so that's why our entries here are relatively straightforward. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Select that all, all apply. Uh, in this case, none of these are going to apply, right? So we don't have any additional selling expenses. Um, it's not an ordinary disposition. The holding period we, we agree with, it's correct. Uh, it's not qualified small business stock. Qualified small business stock is gonna be, generally it's not publicly traded. Uh, very unique circumstances apply there, but the idea is if you have qualified small business stock, you can often get a capital gains exemption. Uh, this is not a worthless security, right? So in other words, we're not, uh, we're not creating a deem sale because we think it's worthless. And again, it's not part of an ESOP because uh, we are not uh, an employee. John is not an employee of this company, and these are these weren't shares issued to him as part of his compensation. So none of these apply. Go ahead and continue. And so we've got our first entry in there. So now we just have to replicate it for the other entries, and then we can uh, move on to see what the return looks like after everything is completed. So I'm just going to repeat the process here for the next line item, right? So it's stock, not employee. We got 68.203 shares. Public Stock Inc. And for this disposition, it was on February 12, 2022. It was the date we acquired it. And we sold it on the same day. Proceeds were 1159.17. Cost base is 1,791.6. Again, nothing, nothing unique to change here. None of these apply. Okay, so add another one. You can see why uh, it's very, very helpful to be able to download this data automatically. <laughs> so I would highly recommend doing so because you'll save yourself a lot of headaches and quite frankly, uh, human error does come into play when you're entering a lot of these. And so uh, very often you will make a mistake and then you have to kind of go back and find where you made the error. Uh, okay, so proceeds here for this one, 1,074. Okay. All right. Non covered. So this is the last entry for this public stock inc. Investment was acquired August twelfth. Sold again September eighth. Proceeds sixteen ninety one point ten. And another thing to know, I'm typing in the, the cents here, right? So the uh, fractions of a dollar. Uh, but on the return, what you'll see is that these are rounded off usually. And the IRS is okay with that, right? The IRS actually prefers if you just report in whole dollars. So the tax software often will just round these, but some won't. Um, so, you know, enter it, whatever is easiest for you. But if, it does, if you do see it rounded, when we actually look at the return, that's okay. You are allowed to report rounded off uh, figures. And again, when, when I'm done entering these, we'll go ahead and look at the uh, return and we'll be able to see 
uh, whether TurboTax did us a solid and, and rounded everything off. Okay, so last one here is the ETF Inc. shares. April 9, 2022, and we sent, again sold it all September 8, 2022. Now this was a big one. John sold a lot of stock he had saved. 46.782.4. Okay, and the same same thing as before, right? None of these unique circumstances apply. So we'll go ahead. Okay, so now we've got all these entries entered here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So all the entries should reconcile to uh, the data that we have on the uh, 1099B, right? So we can see here, uh, you know, the ETF gain and loss is 1528. So if I look here, I can see, okay, 152850 for that one. And then these four entries should all line up as well, right? So the 620, 93, 63250, 67, losses. 16067. Okay, so one, once you're confident that all these are good, uh, the sales section all matches, right? Remember, these are all short term, non covered, uh, date disposed of, everything looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit continue here. Okay, so all of these have been entered. I'll confirm that. And it's telling me that my, my uh, net capital losses. Are $1,485, okay. Okay, and it just takes us back to the, the wage and income screen. All right, so now let's look at the return and then see how these actually ended up on the, the filing itself, because I think this is very helpful. So as the previous videos, we look in the tax tools section down here in the print center. So if I bring up the print center, do a preview of this year's return, we're doing the 2022 federal return, viewer print forms, and I go ahead and have this load up. I'll zoom in here so we can see a little better. So here's uh, John's return as it's being built, right? So we've got his wages up there, the interest income, and the item that has been updated from the prior video is going to be 8949 in Schedule D, right? So if we scroll down to 8949 and Schedule D, we want to make sure that these transactions actually ended up there, right? So here we can see on the first 8949 page that comes up, we have the short term transactions with basis not being reported, right? So the non covered. And um, we can see here all of the entries that we just made, right? So we've got the Public Stock Inc. entries. Uh, the ETF Inc and then the gain or loss for each one and so if you if you were pulling up side by side you know this information with um, what we had on the 1099B you would see everything would match up right and that's what we're after we want the gains and losses of each of these dispositions uh, to match with what we have on the return and then we know we did everything right okay all right uh, so that covers it for this tutorial I hope that was helpful if you have any questions, obviously uh, feel free to leave a comment below, and I look forward to seeing you uh, again on the next video. All right, thank you so much.